Hello, this is Adam Goji here coming at you with another Godzilla related video. And today we'll be reviewing Godzilla King Monsters. And we're gonna take a break from the. This will probably be the last uh, review I do before I do Godzilla Final Wars. I'm very excited for that one. I just watched it today. I just. You know what? I'm gonna probably do Godzilla vs. Bailante Nets. And then. Well. It's almost the end of the month, so I might as well just do Godzilla Final Wars. One of my all-time favorite Godzilla movies. But basically, Godzilla Kingdom Monsters came out in 2019. One, it was probably the best film of that year. I know people say Avengers Endgame is the best film of that year, but to be honest, I didn't really like Avengers Endgame. Godzilla Kingdom Monsters is more my thing. But this film basically. Is the sec is the third installment of the monster first and the second film to feature Godzilla. And it brings and not only it's the second film to bring back Godzilla from a five year from him not being a monster first for five years, even though we had like a couple of films in between Godzilla. We had Shin Godzilla, we had we basically had uh, Shin Godzilla, we had <sighs> the anime trilogy, even though it was, even though it was meh. We had the anime trilogy, and then we had, yeah, that's basically it. The anim Godzilla single, Godzilla, Shin Godzilla and the anime trilogy, that's basically it. <laughs> but, anyway, we're not going to get into those videos, so. Due to Nets here for Godzilla Month. Well, they don't want to see him. Maybe they don't want But today, we're only talking about Godzilla Kingdom Monsters. Godzilla Kingdom Monsters is probably the best of the Monsterverse. I know people say GVK and Kong Skull Island are the best. But to me, I think Godzilla Kingdom Monsters is the best because it delivers to the fans, gives the fans what they want, what they need. Without I know a lot of people complain about the fights in this movie, like the monster fights. Mostly it's because you can't see anything. Well, unlike 2014, you can actually see the monsters. The only problem is it's in the dark and it's raining, which I think they took some information from Pacific Rim with that. But you do get some awesome action scenes like with Rodan doing barrel rolls and Martha, and Martha over the waterfall and her shining her god ways like she looks like an angel in that scene and then we got Gaza which is probably the, <laughs> which is probably one of the strongest Godzillas second strongest third strongest Godzilla right next to the Heisei Godzilla and Godzilla Final Wars I know people say he's the strongest Godzilla but nah Godzilla Final Wars is the strongest I'm gonna get so much hate for that. <laughs> but anyway. Uh yeah. I like this occasion I like Doherty's Godzilla better than Gary's Godzilla mostly because he looks more like Godzilla. Even though there's not really much of a difference between the twenty fourteen and the and the lead and Doherty's Godzilla, the only difference is, is the dorsal plates and the tail. That's basically the only difference. There's not that many differences between 2014 and the and Doherty. The only difference is basically dorsal plates. He's got claw, his feet actually look like feet this time. Like he has claws on his feet. His hands are basically the same from 2014. Kind of. They just have more claws. They give him more claws on his hands and feet. His tail is more rounded. His dorsal feet, plates on his dorsal plates look more traditional. And that's probably why I love Godzilla has some pretty cool scenes. But let's talk about the characters. Uh, the story mostly focuses on around the. On the Russell family, it starts out with Madison Russell and Emma Russell. That's the main focus. It's basically on the Russell family. 
And about to say it was uh, still probably the best characters in this movie. Well, yeah. Well, him and Mark Russell. I think I think Mark Russell and Dr. Sills are deliver on the rules. I think Mark Russell is probably my favorite character in this movie, not including Dr. Sills are. But, yeah. And this is... And the other characters like Chen, Rick, the other guy who makes himself nothing to watch, just maybe doesn't do anything. G Force, well, G Team. I'm calling it G Force. People from G Force, and that's basically it. Yeah, those are basically. That, that's it. There's not that very many characters. <laughs> They're less. I know there's too many characters in this movie, and that's what most months of this movies have problem with, that they put way too many characters in it. Well, I know Godzilla movies do this too, but you actually get to spend time with these characters, and these characters are really just there to make jokes and stuff. Well, most of them. Some of them don't make jokes, like Seozawa, and... Yeah. And speaking of the jokes, uh, this... Movies <laughs> got some little bit of comedy. That's probably why most people I think it's a comedy that kills this movie. Because most people think that's where all the hate comes from is the comedy and the, and the kaiju fights. But the characters are well rounded, really interesting to watch. Yeah. And apparently, the Shobajin on spoilers, Shobajin on this movie, which is an Easter egg that it's a hit and miss, you don't notice it right away. And that's basically it. Now, let's get to the juicy part the kaiju. The kaiju action is pretty good. So, I've, I think the first kaiju action we get is from the city. From where we left off in 2014 with Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. There's so many memes about that. Anyway, the Kaiju action is pretty good. Sip her. With Godzilla just destroying, killing Andrew during his fight with the Mutos. And basically, Mark Russell hates. Godzilla for that because he killed his son and has a grudge to him which I wouldn't uh, understand <laughs> and kind of ruined his life because it was a download spiral after that yep and then the movie open goes to Mark Russell not Mark Russell Emma Russell and Madison Russell and I thought Madison Russell was gonna play a bigger role in this movie when the trailers came out because she was like front and center of every trailer which is kind of weird but anyway this movie starts out great especially when Martha wakes which is pretty cool this is probably my favorite scene in the entire MonsterVerse when Martha well, not my favorite scene. I think all the good scenes from the MonsterVerse are in this movie. Okay, anyway. Let's talk about the kaiju. Mafia wakes up. It's pretty cool. Then we get the Godzilla intimidation scene. Which he's basically probably like a gorilla. They even say in the movie. I mean, yeah. That and then he goes in on the gun, and then we got the door trapped in ice, which is not explained. We don't even get, we don't got an idea how he got trapped in ice. We have no idea how he got in there. I know in the novelization they said Godzilla trapped him in there after a fight he had with him in Antarctica. I have no idea how he got trapped in ice, but anyway. Alan Jonah, who's also another character, probably also one of my favorite villain characters in a Godzilla movie. Alan Jonah 
basically wants to wake up Ghidorah so he can destroy the world. Of course! Anyway, he gets Emma Russell because she has the Orca. Basically, the Orca is a part, is basically the scene that can talk to Kaiju, which, which is basically like a Kaiju translator, I guess. Basically, that's basically what it is. It basically finds the frequencies of these Kaiju. It's really complicated on how to explain it. Anyway, basically that's what the orca is. Androna gets her. Lots of stuff happens. Mark Russell, the monarch, monarch at a court meeting with Mark Russell. Not Mark Russell. We've got about what they should do about Godzilla and the Titan. Uh, not Titans. The Kai, the Titans, also known as Kaiju. I'm not calling them Titans. I'm calling them Kaiju or monsters. Change is a stupid name. What they just do about the kaiju. And that scene only lasts for a couple minutes. And we do get a couple of returning guys like the Admiral from 2014. But it doesn't really play a role in this movie at all. He's barely even in it. He's only in like, what, three scenes? With barely any line of dialogue. Anyway. And then they go recruit Mark Russell so they can help get the Orca and Madison Russell and Emma Russell back. They go to, they have a meeting about what they should do. Mark Russell tells them that they're looking for a bigger prize, not Martha. And he basically tells them to go kill the Titans and the Orca is basically useless. He could, mostly because he has a grudge towards the Kaiju. Anyway, Godzilla comes up, does his intimidation spray, and then to, and then they, Mark Russell goes, they open up the window to Outpost 54 down in, down in Godzilla's home. That's basically it. And then, blah blah blah, a lot of boing. Human stuff happens, human stuff happens, a lot of stuff happens in this movie. I can't explain it all, all in one video. I'll probably have to do it in a live stream on a full review of how I can do this. And that'll probably be how I can do it, because if I explain it all in one video, it's we're going to be here a while. <laughs> but basically, Mark Russell tries to get the Orca back, tries to say menace and muscle, Emma Russell... Basically, he turns on Monarch, releases Ghidorah, that's right, Ghidorah releases, we have a cool action scene with Ghidorah, which is probably one of the best scenes in this entire movie. We just see the people running in terror from Ghidorah, and Ghidorah killing people, which is probably the best scene in the entire movie. Well, one of the best scenes, I'll get into that in a minute. Then we get the next Godzilla movie. And then we get Godzilla vs. Anarcha. We get a battle between Godzilla and Godzilla. And this is when you notice something that they took from 2014. We get to see what? We don't get to see the kaiju. We get to see cutaways. A lot of cutaways. I know it's not as bad as 2014, but it's still noticeable. Anyway, it doesn't bother me that badly. They still show us some of the kaiju action more than they did in 2014. We just get to look at it from a human's perspective. I would have liked it if they would have showed us the kaiju action like they did in GVK. But anyway, this is probably one of my. F the door of us, Godzilla. Ghidorah wins, actually. <laughs> For once, Ghidorah wins a fight against Godzilla. Well, technically, he didn't win that battle in the draw. Ghidorah just retreats. So he can live a fight in that day. He injures Godzilla. Well, beats Godzilla up and retreats. And this Ghidorah is probably my favorite incarnation of Ghidorah because it has three personalities. It's 
which is basically seven with three heads, Itchy, Pani, Kevin being the right head, Itchy being the middle head, Sun being the left head, who also we like to call Kevin. Basically, <laughs> Ghidorah is basically a meme. Like, the strongest Kaiju out there. Probably one of the strongest Ghidorahs out there. Probably the strongest Ghidorah out there. I don't think there's any Ghidorah stronger than him. He literally just took over the whole world. Yeah. Basically, they go... F- they figure out that Emma Russell tries to betray him. Blah, blah, blah. They... Emma Russell and Alan Jonah try to wake up Rodan so they can release more Titans. Emma Russell gives a speech of what they about her evil plan, blah blah blah, evil plan, evil plan, mwah! About the environment. It's not really an environmental message, they just want to put an environmental message in the movie just for a callback. Anyway. They decided to do that. Guts. Rodan, wake, the Awakened, Rod- Alan Jonah, Emma Russell activates the Orca and Awakens Rodan. And Rodan Awakens, and we get the, one of the best scenes in this time movie Rodan versus Fire Jets. Ghidorah, but before that, Ghidorah changes paths. He was hiding in the Category 6 Hurricane, which turns out wasn't a Category 6 Hurricane. The Lord was creating this Hurricane. And basically, Ghidorah heads towards Rodan, and we get a Kaiju fight that's about to happen. But before that, we get Ghidorah versus. We get Rodan fighting just fire jets. And Rodan fighting fire jets, it's so cool. This is one of the Best scenes in time movie. We get to see Rodan doing barrel rolls in pilots. It's crapping, crapping his wings, destroying fire jets, destroying all the fire jets. This scene is so freaking awesome. Rodan and all is going, and then he does his barrel roll, killing all the fire jets. Oh my god, that's so awesome. And then he goes after the Argo. Oh yeah, Argo is basically the super jets. That's basically what it is. It's basically like the Super Hats 4, but, but they just call it the Argo because they're going to get the license for Super Hats. Anyway. And then we get the Archive fight between Rodan and Ghidorah, which is brief. Ghidorah beats Rodan easily, which is kind of weird because Michael Doherty said that he didn't want Rodan to be a side cat, and Rodan gets beaten down easily. Made some sense. He does put up a fight though in the beginning, but then gets annihilated by Rodan. Gets annihilated by Ghidorah. And then Ghidorah tries to go after the Argo. After, tries to go after the Argo. Mark Russell gets some some of G Team who had refugees onto a plane. I don't know why you bring refugees on a plane. That makes no goddamn sense. Anyway, he opens the cargo door and then brings the refugees on the plane. I don't know why I'm bringing that up. I have no idea why I'm bringing that up. <laughs> anyway, Ghidorah goes to the Orco plane and decides to fight. And then Godzilla shows up out of nowhere and fights Ghidorah. They're fighting the corny teeth. And then Admiral, the Admiral. From 2014, because he says to tell them to retreat because they're gonna fire the Austin Destroyer prototype, which is a prototype, so that means we could get another Austin Destroyer that isn't a prototype, which I like to see. They fire the Austin Destroyer. The, oh, main our characters get away from that area. They fire the Austin Destroyer, kills, almost kills Godzilla, and doesn't even damage Ghidorah. Nope. Doesn't even get damage him. Ghidorah does his alpha core, waking all the titans around the world. 
And yeah, he basically takes over the world in a couple minutes. Titans wake up everywhere. With the only defense that can destroy God's that can destroy Ghidorah gone. Titans like Behemoth, Medusa, Skeela. Skeela, better to pronounce that. Muto. And tons of other kaiju. The Muto Muto 4 or Barb. Muto Barb or Queen Muto or whatever you want to call it. Waking up all over the world. Yeah. If those four kaijus are woken, there's nothing they can stop. There's literally nothing that can stop the world from being taken over. Like, the world is doomed. It is screwed. We are screwed. <sighs> okay. Then basically, the then we get seen with Mo, Monarch, and then Martha awakens from a cocoon. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention Martha turned, got into a cocoon earlier in the movie. Forgot to mention that. Martha goes. In, Martha awakens from a cocoon. We get a beautiful scene. A moth, a Martha over the waterfall. Beautiful, which they kind of do in GVK of Kong over the waterfall. I don't know. Way they did that in GVK. Yeah, I know. Anyway, Martha, let's we get to see Martha's wing over the waterfall, which is one of the best scenes in this movie. Another good scene. There's actually a lot of good scenes in this movie. Too many to point out. Should probably do a top ten scenes from Godzilla. Anyway. And with that done, Mafia heads Monarch rise at Outpost 54. We've got Zilla destroyed and the military trying to get help from Monarch. And Ammo just basically tells us exposition, exposition about what happened to the world, which we kind of figure out already. Madison Russell, and then meanwhile, Emma Russell, Madison Mano. Meanwhile, a little bit after that, Madison Russell tells Emma Russell that you're a monster. And Madison Russell gets mad at Emma Russell and Madison Russell get into an argument with Madison Russell swimming the door and then she decides to take the orca. She has a conversation with Emma and decides to take with Emma and Alan saying they can take order can take the Walker to Fenway in Boston, and that doesn't work at all. So basically, we're screwed. We're so freaking screwed. Take it to Boston. <sighs> okay. Anyway, let's wrap this up. I'm gonna take the Walker to Boston. Monarch tries to survive Godzilla. A lot of things happen in this movie. They arrive at the Hollow Earth. Godzilla. They discover. They go down a vortex that leads to the Hollow Earth. An underwater that's been sunk. Godzilla's home. Where. Basically, in novelization, they say that. In GVK novelization, this. Well, not very really mentioned. We don't know what is. It's mentioned in the movie. About people watching Godzilla. And they built a city around Godzilla. And you can notice that they also, Mafia was also there for some reason. I know because there are some Easter eggs of Mafia being there. So maybe Mafia, maybe that was a city for Godzilla and Mafia. I don't know. It's not, it's really hard to explain. Yeah. Basically, they built a city around Godzilla. They decide. And they realize that this is where Godzilla has been all the time through the years, through his five year absence, regenerating. And that's basically how Godzilla regenerates. It's big. They say that this process will take times. 
yeah that would take years and they don't have that so they decide to go to plan anyway but they discover that the torpedo system is broken so they have to launch by hand and why can't they just use the torpedo why couldn't they just get like an air sub or fix the torpedo system in a couple of minutes it doesn't take that long to fix it uh, i don't know or why didn't they just send like a drone up there or i don't know anyway dr sozar decides to sacrifice himself and we get a sad scene about dr sozar basically sacrifice himself to help Godzilla blows up the bomb does uh, yes he talks to Mark Russell gives him his book and basically that's it and then we get Godzilla awakening with him with a power boost fully charged for battle he loads that sub and then bushes it off and just goes away. That was weird. They decide to know what to do, and then it's we assume it's over, but it is not. Man, this review is long. Okay, let's set this up. They basically all go to Boston. They figure out how to beat Ghidorah. They figure out how to work the Orca. Because basically, she used human and monster DNA, monster sounds to work. I don't know how that works. Science mun- mumbo jumbo. To figure out what to do. Madison Russell activate the Orca, stops the kaijus from attacking, and they're all heading to Boston. You know, like if you when you head to Boston, they all go there. A big kaiju rubble. We get a kaiju asking. Ghidorah lands, destroys, fin- destroys the Boston Stadium, almost destroys the Orca. He's in bad shape. Almost kills Madison. And then Godzilla saves her at the last second. And then we get a fight scene, which is also a cutaway, which is not as annoying as 2014, but it's a cutaway. I hate cutaways. That's so freaking annoying. I know Toho movies do this too, but at least they show us the kaiju action. They show us like a good 10 minutes or 5 minutes of kaiju action. They at least show us the kaiju action. They don't cut away like every minute to show us the humans. I don't know. But we see the Gaza. We see Gaza crush tails of Ghidorah. They fight. They fight. They fight. They fight. They fight. It's Gaza and Ghidorah. And then Martha shows up. Then Zavine. Martha springs her silk on Ghidorah, trapping him in the building. Gaza grabs himself, destroys Ghidorah. Ghidorah does something. But before that, I think Gaza fights with some with Ghidorah. Ghidorah almost kills the main character as Martha shows up. So the fight's Ghidorah, which is a two on one battle, and then Mordom shows up, which is a tag team battle. They all fight. They fight. They fight. They fight. They fight. They fight. Basically, Rodan's fighting Martha. Godzilla's fighting Ghidorah. We don't get to see it, but they're fighting. Ghidorah gets a power boost. Eats some electricity that gives him a power boost. Ghidorah wins. Almost Billy gets got a little scar on his face, which I have no idea how it healed in two year in three years of three or five years after I don't know. Basically, Godzilla wins. Basically, Godzilla Martha kills almost kills Rodan, stabs him with her stinger. Almost kills Rodan. And that's basically it. Rodan's out of the picture. Godzilla's lifted up into the air by Ghidorah. Dropped, which should have destroyed Boston, but it did not. Mark Russell, but during the battle, Mark Russell 
bunch of human stuff happens. Human, human, human mumbo jumbo stuff happens. Basically, they try to look for Madison Russell. Emma Russell tries to find Mark Russell. Blah, blah, blah. And that's basically it. Good old drops Guzzle up on the floor. That's basically it. And that basically sums up. Ghidorah tries to kill Godzilla, but Mafa sacrifices herself so Godzilla can live. Ghidorah blows up Mafa, similar to GMK, but instead of Ghidorah, instead of Mafa sacrificing herself for Ghidorah, the world's stretched. And basically, Ghidorah is killed. I don't know. Godora is killed. No, not Godora. Mafa is killed. Godora almost kills Godzilla. They decide to get the orca to work. They try to get on a plane so they can drive Godora. They activate the orca. Godora finds the orca. Heads towards the orca. Emma Russell decides to lead them away to sacrifice herself. But her sacrifice is not as good as Serizawa because she literally destroyed the entire world. Almost destroyed the entire world. And now Godzilla is about to kill. And now Ghidorah destroys the Orca and almost kills Madison Russell with burning. And then we get the best scene in the entire movie Burning Godzilla, which basically obliterates. Well, not the best scene in the entire movie, but Burning Godzilla, which basically obliterates Ghidorah, destroys his wings so he can't get away. Then Ghidorah tries to fire his gravity beams, but Godzilla just launches a nuclear pulse, which first destroys his wings, and then Ghidorah fires his gravity beams, and then what's the nuclear pulse? Pulling off Kevin and me, with Vichy only remaining, and then Ghidorah steps on Godzilla steps on Ghidorah's chest, blowing him up, and he kind of looks like he almost blows up, but not really. I don't know. Then we got our best scene. And then Ghidorah. And then it looks like Ghidorah won, survived, but psych! Godzilla eats Ghidorah's head. And. Basically, does a reverse kiss of death. Blows up Ghidorah with his assembly breath. And then we get the best. And then we get. It's like, Jesus. Good things on our side. Death turn says for now. And then look. And then all the monsters bow down to Godzilla. Bodan bows down first, then all the monsters follow. Godzilla rolls triumphantly. Roll credits. We do give a couple after credit scenes with newspaper wounds, but I'm not gonna get into that. Then we get enough but let's get into the big after credit scene. Ghidorah it turns out Kevin's head is still alive. And Ghidorah and Alan, Alan Jonah take Ghidorah's head. And apparently in novelization of Godzilla vs. Kong, he has two heads. I, I don't know where he got the second head from. But I don't know. Anyway, that basically ends our movie. This movie is pretty good. Pretty good. It's pretty good. I give it. It's probably not the best Monster Vs. It's the mon- this is the best Monster Vs. movie. Of all the monster verse, I like it better than GBK. Maybe Conscore Island is probably the best monster verse. It's probably, it's probably, it's probably the best monster verse movie if compared to story. But if compared to plot, story, and characters, but if we want enjoyment, this is probably the best monster verse movie. Yeah. Well, it depends. GVK is also up there. It's kind of hard to pick which one's the best Monster vs. movie. Obviously, Godzilla 2014 is my least favorite Monster vs. movie. But GVK, Godzilla King of the Monsters, and Kong Skull Island are probably hard to pick from because they're all so good. Anyway, Godzilla wins. And then we get our best and then to sum up the kaiju action is pretty good 
everything in this movie is pretty good. Super. So if I had to rate this, uh, 8.7. I, know, I can't remember my last rating, so 8.9, maybe a 9 out of 10. But if I had to rate this out of 5, uh, 4.5. Four stars out of four out of five stars out of five. So this is the best MonsterVerse movie out of the MonsterVerse. I highly recommend you check out this movie. That out of the way, next movie we'll be doing is, uh, well, I was gonna do all ten Godzilla movies, my top ten Godzilla movies, but well, I had, I did the like, gameplay series videos, which is still. On my channel, <laughs> kind of took up most of my couple of month. So now we're doing so, so I can take breaks in between Godzilla month. So now we are doing Godzilla Final Wars, my all time favorite Godzilla movie. We're gonna end it on a high note. Coming on Saturday, not coming that Saturday to you. Just in time for seventeenth anniversary, we will be doing Godzilla Final Wars to end it high. I'll see you then. Bye bye. And this is Nagoji signing off. And remember, stay big, G fans.